Okay, as promised, going to do a short um, description on this fan. Do take note that I'm actually not paid for this. It's just that happen that I like these fans. Okay, they are non-RGB, right? Now, on the uh, right hand side itself, right, this is actually the uh, five blade pressure fan. All right, well built. Okay, and for some reason, I don't know what material this is. This is not hard and not soft. But the mention on the website itself, right, this is actually meant to um, absorb the vibration. The material is pretty solid, I should say. Now, this is actually for the airflow, which is actually meant for case uh, airflow that has a total of nine blades. And yeah, it's almost the same build, in fact, it's just the blades. Now, um, something which is actually unique about this fans, right, um, at every header itself, right, it's always with a main plug and with a splitter where you can actually daisy chain okay from one uh, fan to another okay I'm pretty clumsy at one hand so do pardon me okay, let me see if I could get this right so you can actually just basically pluck um, into one uh, I should say one series then on this end right just pluck it to your CPU just make sure that um, your motherboard haters, right, the fan haters itself, the chassis haters, they are having the, um, enough amperage. Average on the motherboard itself, right, it's uh, up to 1 ampere. <coughs> okay, and some boards like what I'm having right now, right, I do know that my Taiji board is in fact having the uh, 2 amperes that says chassis and pump, and for CPU it's actually 1 ampere. Right, and all this is actually rated on the box itself, it will stay over here. Okay, which is yep, twenty zero point two five on the airflow, and let's see. Okay, this is actually the static, which is a zero point one five. Okay, so having to say this right, a header itself, if let's say um, on your specification itself, it it, it says that it's actually um one ampere enough. Uh, power to actually supply to your fans is actually one ampere right so what you do need to do is that you can actually calculate by uh, by this which is actually on the fan itself for example let's say your motherboard is actually uh, your motherboard fan header is actually one ampere okay i mean supply to one ampere you can actually do let's see um four of these fans without any issues because four is actually just 60 and you can go all the way up to uh, i would say um 85 in fact you can do six fans okay if your fan header is actually one ampere but normally i would advise um not to do four fans on one header it's best to actually just to have two fans okay <clears throat> so for this right if let's say my fan header is actually uh one ampere and here stated that it's actually 25 ampere so it's best that you can actually just uh, run uh, not more than four fans so having to say this, right, uh, it's best that you can actually um, do it just two fans as mentioned, all right? Okay, now, what's included in the box itself, right? Um, got to warn you guys that this screws, right, is silver in color. So if you have a case that is actually black in color, it's advisable that you actually get some um, additional um, screws for this, all right? Uh, so that it's like one set. And of course, the uh, warranty support um, information. And this is pretty interesting, okay? They give you this. Now, having to say this, right, uh, what you need to do, right, to see all the specs, to see how it's being connected, and all the um, necessary info about this fan, what you can do, okay, let me just uh, pick my phone here, okay? Use a phone to actually scan the uh, QR code and it will just bring you to the website itself. And you can just click on English. Okay, as you can see. Okay, I accept. It gives you all, all the diagram itself. And it will tell you that how it's been um, daisy chain, things like that. Okay. Now, I think this is actually the most important part, or should I say, you guys have been waiting for. How does the fan perform? Okay, now, taking a look at these fans here. Okay, um, the bottom is actually the pressure fan. The top is actually the uh, airflow. Listening to it, right, you can actually hear the fan is actually blowing pretty hard because it's uh, blowing air on the on my mat. 
So if I were to leave it up, okay, at this distance, okay, this is actually the pressure fan. I'm moving away. Okay, I do understand that it's actually giving a hum sound, but if you were to put it in a case, right, um, you will actually block off the hums. I've actually tested this before. Okay, not that strong, but as you go closer, right, you feel that it's pretty strong. Okay. Alright, let me just leave this down. Now, this is actually a killer. Okay, from here, the distance compared to that, right, it's blowing lots of air, tons of air. Okay, let me just pause over here and let me just tape a piece of paper so that you guys can know what is actually going on. I don't have a CFM meter nor do I have a fan gauge on it, so I can actually just uh, do a demo on a piece of paper. Hang on. Okay, welcome back. Now, this is actually the uh, P140, which is actually a static fan. Now, looking at a piece of paper, right? Okay, uh, let me just adjust this. Okay, it's actually flowing this much. And just to let you guys know, alright, looking at the distance, it's pretty strong. And look at the um, this thing here. Okay, it's actually moving. So probably I would say that, okay, I hope I don't drop this. If I am, see over here I still can feel the air. Oops. <laughs> okay, probably around here. Yeah, you can see that it's still moving. Okay, the air is pretty, pretty scary. This is a static pressure. But of course, um, this is going to be like, you know, um, air is going to push through quite a lot. And it's going to be near the radiator itself. So you can imagine that how much force is actually pushing through the radiator, radiator itself. I'm just going to pause over here and going to go over to the airflow. Okay, this is actually the uh, P140. Alright, it's even generating more airflow. Look at that. Okay, it's pretty scary, right? Okay, some of you might ask me that, what's this? What is this? Well, this is something which I actually did myself. It's actually, uh, what do you call it, a fan, uh, fan bus bay, which right now you guys have the uh, so-called the... Okay, let me just off this here. It's pretty scary. Okay, now, um, basically, uh, you guys have actually used this uh, fan connectors, the multi-fan connectors, that, they, that the uh, commercial um, guys did it nicely. Okay, I've take, finally taken off one hand, it's pretty difficult. Wow, well, what is this? This is actually a fan bus bay, I call it, where you can actually do it yourself if you want to. This parts here is actually not um, expensive because they come in packets of five so total cost of this right in fact back then I cost less it's cost less than three bucks or should I say four bucks four or three, three to four bucks to actually do this of course you can actually change this connector um, to SATA if you know how now just uh, introduction now before the era where you guys have all the uh, cables that is actually in black etc etc right and you wouldn't know which is which what is um, 12 volt, how do you actually get 12 volt, how do you actually get 7 volts, how do you actually get 5 volts, where they tell you that, okay, you need a fan control, actually control your fan to run at lower RPMs. Now, the trick is, what they actually do, right, the modes that you see on the controller itself, right, what it does is actually tro um, toggle um, 5 volts, 7 volts, and 12 volts. <clears throat> now, how I see it is, okay, based on the fact that um, in the past, they have this kind of uh, so-called Molex, which is actually a uh, colored uh, definition. So the yellow is actually the child board, followed by the ground, followed by the ground. And the last one is actually um, the, how should I put it in a way? Uh, plus 5 volt. Yep, that's right. This is 5 volt. This is uh, 12 volt. Yellow is 5, oh, sorry, yellow is 12. Then followed by ground, another ground, and then 5 volts. So if you do pair up any black, any of these two black to the yellow, it will be 12 volt. If you pair up the uh, red and the black, right, it will be um, 5 volts. If you pair up the uh, 
red and yellow, it will give you seven votes. Now, how do I actually indicate uh, which, which is which? Back then when Monarchs came is out, right, um, you will see that this is a groove here. This is actually the number one, which is actually the 12 vote. And four is actually the uh, five votes. Now, looking over on those modern days uh, Monarchs, I should say, okay, how do I differentiate which is which? Okay, if you see, okay, from the top right, you can't see what is actually going on. Okay, sometimes it's actually on the cable itself if there is a... Okay, I would actually judge based on the uh, connection itself and not the cable itself. Alright, having to say this, right, um, or as a reference, you can actually take this as a reference. Okay, just face the same. Right, the same cutting and everything and you can actually just tell which cable is which cable. Now, as I mentioned to you, right, um, this is always one. Red is always four. So if I were to actually turn this, right, if you can see here, there's a one there, right? This is actually a 12 volt. And this here, four, okay, this is actually a five volt. So having to say this, this two pin at the left, okay, I'm actually pulling out from here, this two. This will give you 12 volt. This two. The uh, right two, I should say. Okay, this two that I'm pinching will give you 5 volts. The last, which is this two, from 1 and 4 when you connect together, right, that is actually 7 volts. Alright. Now, having to say this, right, uh, you must say that, oh, how about fans? Now, for fan connectors, it comes in two form. First is the 3 pin. Okay, this is how it looks like. Second, which is actually the 4 pin. Now, what's the difference between a 3 pin and a 4 pin? 4 pin itself is always known as PWM connectors. Or should I say, it gives the function whereby you can actually control the uh, fan speed itself. Let me just further explain, but before I do so, let's go on to the um, connection of the fans. Now, if you to look on the uh, header itself, or should I say the uh, connector itself, right, there is always indication. This is not so clear. Let me just show you here. Okay, as you can see, there's a 1 here. This represents that pin 1 is in fact ground, which is actually negative. Pin 2, the second pin, in fact is positive. Pin 3 is actually a sensor. Pin 4, in fact, it controls the fan RPM. So having to say this, right, PWM fans is in fact good in the sense that it takes in temperature and it does uh, control the fan according to your temperature curve that you actually done on your motherboard. Now do take note that some fans, right, you can actually do daisy chain. Okay, like this pair of fans here, right? I can actually connect one fan to another with just one connector. So just plugging to one connector, it will turn on both fans. Now, do take note that sometimes you might feel curious that, hey, how come the uh, splitter itself, right? The ones that connect to the second uh, fan, right? This is actually the first fan. Okay, then this allows you to connect to the second fan. And for the first fan itself, right, why is there a missing pin, which is here? Okay, let me just take this end to show you. Okay, if you can see over here, the third pin is missing. And you're saying that, hey, this is actually the um, sensor itself that sends the temperature and etc. Well, for motherboard um, haters, right, they only accept one um, readings from a fan and not both. That's the reason why um, when you do a daisy chain from one fan to another, okay, there's always a third pin missing. All right, but overall, when you do this and to connect to one header, okay, connect this, meaning you say both fans are connected as one. When you connect to one, right, it does control both fans. So you need not have to worry about the missing pin. Okay. Then you say the motherboard take, takes one reading, then it will control the RPM, which both are similar, so that you wouldn't have one um, stronger and the other one um, lower RPMs. Okay, or should I say that this will help 
the board itself, your motherboard itself, not to get confused of which reading to take. Okay, back to the third, um, the three pin itself. Now the three pin itself, right, is slightly different. You still you still can connect this um to the motherboard itself, but it's just lack of a features of uh, controlling the fan RPM. Now you have again on the header itself, right, one which is actually pin one negative, then pin two positive, third one is the sensor. Okay, now. On this controller itself, right, most of you would actually get um, aftermarket controllers, or should I say, uh, it plugs multiple um, connection. You don't have to worry about the polarity and the sensor itself. It's actually all prepared program on the controller itself. It's just like a motherboard. So if you were to purchase a controller, right, I would I would advise right now, it's best to actually get um, PWM fans and a PWM controller because it does read the readings and it does control the fans RPM if you want to have a quiet um, environment to work in or should I say that you wouldn't want to actually wrap up most of the time you don't want to wrap, wrap up your fans to run at full speed so um, it controls it fluctuates so it's best to actually get a PWM fan with a PW connector Okay, having to say so, right, I hope you guys have actually uh, learned something. So, yeah, I'll just move on and to continue all the rest of my, uh, rest of my parts. So, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.